Welcome one and all to Survival Episode 1, right here from the former hardcore world. This brand new series is going to be set in the same world as my 23 episode hardcore world. I didn't die, I feel that that would be disingenuous of me to die and then come back as a survival, but I decided that I want to make sure this series lasts for a very long time. We are into kingdom building and lore and storytelling here. If that's your bag, you're going to love it here. All the stuff you're seeing above, that exists in this world. We are 2300 days in and going to keep going. But don't worry, if you haven't seen the old series, this is a great place to get started. Get your feet on the ground because I'm going to introduce you to all the main characters of our lore and catch you up on the story really fast. You can start here and be good with a clean slate. Now, because we're starting over with an episode one here, I do want to start a brand new kingdom. Eventually, we'll get back to some of the older kingdoms in this world, but for right now, I want to start fresh. So we're going to be starting here, where I have a raid farm and a slime farm, but it looks terrible. I want to actually build a kingdom around it. This is going to be the kingdom of the Avon, and these people are going to be very sort of Mayan-influenced architecture, and I also can collect all of this mud and mangrove wood and leaves that I really need to flush out this entire kingdom. I moved my beacon so that I could harvest things a little quicker, but I don't have a single ingot. So jumped into the nether and grabbed a couple of gold just to make an ingot so I can start up my beacon. This area that you see right here is going to be the kingdom of the Avon. It's going to be all within the island surrounded by water. And I think I want to do a custom landscape around it. But if I'm going to do a custom landscape, that is going to require a ton of digging. That's okay, because I live stream basically four days a week, essentially on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. So you can check out any of my live streams right there. But so I dug down to the very bottom of the world. I put down my beacon. This is probably going to be here for a very long time. I got my beacon all set up with haste, and I'm ready to go. One thing I do want to mention, there will be a lore segment. Now, back in the hardcore series, I would do up to four lore segments per episode. This is going to be a little bit different. There's going to be one lore segment in the middle, but it will be longer than anything I have ever done before. Then, there will be an epilogue. You don't want to miss the epilogue because it sets up the future. Every episode is going to have one. Don't miss that. They're usually great. Oh man, look at this. This looks so good. There is one tiny little problem though. That mountain over in the right, it's got to go. It's got to go. I want this whole area to be basically flat and then I will rebuild up some custom terrain, but I need to get rid of that mountain first. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to doing a giant, horrible landscaping project right off the bat, but I think I got to do it because where I want to build, it's basically connected to this. So let's go. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on live streaming digging this area and it's still not done, but I do need some vines and I want to get them growing, so I flew over to the jungle to grab a few. I can't believe as long as I've had this world that I've never done a vine farm, but I surely haven't and I'm going to have to do probably a manual one for right now and maybe we'll figure out a better system later. Actually, can you even do an automatic vine farm? Maybe with a dispenser and shears? I don't even actually know. I'd have to try it out, but this should work for at least right now and maybe I'll... Hmm, I actually have an idea. Maybe I should do like a water stream collection bit for this? That could be nice. I do need to head back to the old world because I need to pick up a couple things in New Hope and then head to Steelport. Oh, I love this industrial city so much, but we're only here for one thing, and that's to build a farm. All of my farms for this world are going here in Steelport. I want to make a moss farm because that's going to be a primary building block of what we're going to be working on this episode and the entire Avon Kingdom, really. So I found a great design, and, well, let's get to building. Oh, it wouldn't be a fix a video without some serious trumpet, and well, there you go. But this farm is going to be awesome, I believe. I didn't really test it yet, so this is the first time. You flick the lever, and you walk over here, and well, just watch the magic happen. Would you look at this thing go? It is so awesome. Now, I didn't realize at the time of recording this, but looking back, the right side is not working. That does get fixed later, but for right now, I am super happy with it. I am so happy to be able to AFK in this world now, though. That is a huge thing. I never AFK'd in the hardcore world because I really was always in a hustle to get as much done in 100 days as I could. But check out the 30-minute results. This is only 30 minutes. I mean, that is amazing. I'm 
I'm gonna start this kingdom with a bang. We're starting on a huge structure. It's gonna be kind of the king, or well, Levin is the word in the Avon language for king. It's gonna be their palace. And yeah, it's, t it's tough to start a build with the biggest one, but I think I really need to, to sort of set the flow for the entire rest of this culture and civilization. Another thing I want to do on this channel, which is fairly new for me, is I want to work on gradients, but I don't want to just go that standard dark on the bottom, light on top style. I saw something done by my good friend Jermsey Boy, and I want to sort of learn that style, which is a lot more of a mixture. I'm building this entire palace up over the slime farm, so I had to build a square. Now, the square can't be that big because the raid farm is right beside it, and I don't want to sort of get in the way of that. I want that raid farm to still work if, heaven forbid, I need more totems. Just in the time it took me to lay out that one little square, the vines have grown, and my goodness, this is really slow, and you gotta do each one individually, and yeah, okay, I gotta work out something a little better for this. This is rough. One of the things I did in the first couple episodes of my hardcore world is I got a whole bunch of villagers that sell all the different enchanted books that I might need to replace my gear. The thing is, in a hardcore world, you don't really need to replace your gear, because if you need to replace all your gear, well, you probably lost the world. I didn't really think about that, but now that it's a survival world, well, I may eventually need to replace my gear. So let's cure a couple more villagers. I came back to New Hope and I noticed that one of the zombies either despawned, got killed, never existed or something because I only have a zombie on one side and not the other. The problem is the other side is where I need my zombie because I actually have an Unbreaking 3 villager that I have never got a zombie and I've never like cured him. So the deal stink. Okay, I just skipped like an infinite amount of time just to get this one zombie in this one place. He was so uncooperative. He did not want to be trapped, but finally I got him. I plopped a name tag on him. He should be good there forever. However, it didn't take long to realize that he's not attacking my villagers. I don't know why they're down. Like they're down low enough. I, I don't know. I don't know why he's not attacking them. I don't know. Look, he just come on zombie. Do it. Do your thing. I don't know, maybe he just wasn't hungry, but eventually, finally, he started taking a few little nibbles and turned all three of the zombies I want. Two villager for books and actually one cleric, because I want to get rotten flesh trade just for emeralds. Did I tell you why I'm doing this? I don't think I did. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want better shears. I, my shears are so bad, they just break constantly. Yeah, I have lots of iron, but why not get a pair of Efficiency 5 Unbreaking Mending Shears? So I need to get my Unbreaking deal. Hey, he has a jack-o'-lantern. Oh yeah, right. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm recording this bit on Halloween. I was just ready to leave, but then I thought, oh wait, I have these two Fletchers from like day one of my survival world, so why not convert them too? So I did. I mean, brewing, gold, it's not that expensive for me anymore. And finally, 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 I got a whole bunch of unbreaking books. So now I have two mending, two efficiency five, and two unbreaking, and I can enchant two pairs of shears just to go to work on these vines. This is going to be kind of cool, though, having a cleric in there, because thanks to my mob farm over in Steelport, I have tons and tons of rotten flesh. So having a cleric and access to emeralds, this might actually be easier than the book trade, honestly. I returned back over, and this is so crazy fast. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I need some sort of automatic collection bit now, but I do love this. This is going to be really, really helpful for a ton of mossy cobble. I am going to go ahead and do this collection thing. I've been thinking about it and talking about it for a while. Also, I want to get all this mud. If there is mud on this entire island, I'm going to harvest it and just replace it with something. Also gravel. I, I'm taking it all. But in the meantime, let's check out the lore segment for today's video. Now, this is normally the point in the video where I'm going to launch into sort of an animated lore segment that propels the story forward. But before I do that, since this is the first episode, I want to catch everyone up on what has happened up till now. There was an artificial intelligence named Cal. This good-natured AI helped Fred stay alive and sane for a couple hundred days living in an underground fallout bunker. On a distant planet called Tovlin, a ship captained by James Doan crashed. In an effort to escape, they quantumized the ship's computer, Tracy. Tracy split into two copies. One stayed with James Doan, and the other went into the distant, distant past and merged with the AI Cal. For some unknown reason, the AI Cal, now armed with Tracy's quantum abilities, has declared war on the entire living universe. Cal is going systematically from planet to planet, wiping out all life everywhere. Every planet is within his sights. However, all may not be lost. The Master Mage Edwin teleported himself, Fred, and James to a distant future in an effort to save themselves from a Cal attack. 
The trio found a book buried in the ice that told them that this distant future that they are in is in fact the same planet as our survival world story is, but millions of years in the future. They found in that book the exact date that Cal is coming to wipe out all life on Fixtopia, and that date is day 10,000. In an effort to save the future, Edwin was able to teleport himself back to current day in Fixtopia. However, James and Fred are still stranded in the future with no way of escaping. The main character of our survival story is Dr. Steve Tepic. He was actually a former member of James Doan's crew aboard his ship and was teleported to this planet about 2,300 days ago. The book that James, Fred, and Edwin found in the future talked about Dr. Steve Tepic and how he might be the key in defeating Cal. The day is 2300 and Steve Tepic has less than 8,000 days to propel this medieval society into a spacefaring one capable of defeating Cal and his AI armada. Okay, got it? Let's go. Can't help but marvel at this machine Dr. Tepic was able to build in such a short time. I have been gone for nearly half a year. I hope my friends James and Fred are okay. The future they are trapped in is harsh. Tracy, connect to the future node. Connecting. Hello. James, it's good to hear your voice. Edwin? Edwin? Are you well? We are, but things have gotten worse here. Things were bad before I left. How much worse? A lot. Uh, the cold is overcoming our ability to keep it warm. We may have to retreat on the ground soon. How did you get there? Steve told us you were lost to the void. I was trapped for a time, but able to claw my way out. I am safe here, but as the Oracle foretold, I have very little of my old power. I am sorry, old friend. I'm sure it's hard to lose those abilities yet again. I am traveling to a people called the Avon. I believe they were the authors of the book we found that told of the artificial intelligence attack on this world. If anyone can help me put the pieces together, I believe they can. I will do everything I can to bring you two here, but without my powers, I'm not sure. Don't worry about this, Advin. Go to the Abon and save the future. The idea is all these trees have to go. We have to clear this land so we can build. Clear the land. Akshasiti Zemul. Get it? Ugh, I'm gonna have to do it myself. Dr. Tepic. Yes. Wait, Oracle? No, that's not quite right. Edwin? I'm so glad to see you. Yes, it is good to see you as well. I had no idea where you went when the Oracle sent you away. I was trapped in a kind of prison of the mind, but able, eventually, to find my way out. That's great news, but why are you here? I've come to make a trade. I spoke to Levin Fond, the king and arrange an exchange of sorts. I will stay here in research, and he has agreed that you and a Mr. Grady, I believe, may return to New Hope. I can't let you do that. I came here willingly to help the Avon rebuild their kingdom. Steve, the Leaven is interested in my specific knowledge set. He is more than happy with the work you've done, and you are needed elsewhere. The Breath of the Dragon is doing a commendable job at New Hope, but you are needed to oversee the growth. I have no knowledge of spacefaring technology. I can't let you become a prisoner here just for me. <laughs> well, I will be the King's Council. You'll be- wait, what? You just met him and you're going to be his council? <laughs> Go find your family and get Mr. Grady out of his cell. I will be in contact soon. Now 
Now, if you're new to the channel and you think, uh, what was that fix? Then don't worry about it. You're going to get caught up over time. Those lore segments will be in the middle of every survival video, in addition to an epilogue at the end that sort of sets up the future arc. I'm going to catch you all up to speed over time, so hang in there through lore segments. Even if you don't get it, you will, and you're going to love it. I was able to get a little bit of Glow Lichen and a piece of Andesite, which actually completes my Gradient. So I'm not totally sure that I'm going to stick with the Andesite, but I think the Gradient right now, I think it's pretty good. All right, now we did some work here. I built up basically the outer box. Not a lot more than that, just the outer box. I did a lot more digging. Oh man, so much digging. But for right now, I think we're in a good place to continue actually building. I did more research on this than I have ever done probably in the past, where I was actually learning about the Maya, not just architecture, but actually their culture and everything else. And one of the things is their pyramids that they built, they were actually completely solid. I'm not going to do that. I had planned on building this sort of as a bunch of boxes sticking on top of each other up to the AFK point for the slime farm, but it is way higher than I thought, and I'm not going to be able to get it up there. So we're going to have to figure out something else to do for that AFK point, but not today. That's not today's problem. That's probably an episode two problem. But as for now, episode one, oh, the shape is good. I really, really like it. There's a lot more detail that we got to do, but this is a pretty good start. Okay, let's get into some specifics. One of the very classic things that you've all seen images of are these big staircases that go sort of from the ground level up to at least midway, if not the very top. I need to do that. I'm getting a little bit tired of digging, but the only place that I can put the stairs are right where this mountain is, so it's got to go. Also, I'm getting a decent amount of andesite here, and I don't really have very much in this world, so I need to basically take all the andesite I can get my hands on. Check this out. One night I was grinding, and a creeper came up, and I saw a skeleton, and yeah, I got a record. I love that trick. I love it. Now, I say this realizing that I have now built a storage room in several of the last couple episodes on the channel because of Dominion and here, but I need another storage room. But I got to decide where that storage room is going to be, and I think where I'm digging a hole in the wall, that's going to be the king's chambers, which means the storage room has to go lower, which means I don't know where the stairs are going to get there. I guess down in the next level will be fine. I just need to figure out whether I want to do side stairs or, I don't know, maybe a water elevator or something like to get in. But yeah, it'll be all right. So I laid out basically the boxes, and I think this is a good place for right now to at least get started. Oh my goodness, that took so, so, so long to move all of the chests I had outside into a sorted out storage room. I really wish I did automated storage, but I just don't. And anyway, if I was going to, I'd probably do it in Steelport. I looked a lot at sort of the historical recreations of these big Mayan temples, and one of the things I noticed is they, they weren't just boxes. They actually had a little bit of shape. So I added some of that shape, and then I went in and textured sort of the top coming down. I don't know if it's too much coming down or, or not, but I think for right now it's okay, and that'll continue going up. I really do think this is starting to look the part. Like, I want each of the tiers as it goes up to have less and less gradient. My thinking is that the lower down, the closer to the treetops and to the upcoming jungle that's going to fill this area. So it would be more mossy and then to the top, maybe not as mossy. I really like how this is coming out and I'm going to be digging in some windows and doors here, but I, I do want to say that I recorded an episode that I think some of you might really like that's going to be appearing on the second channel in just a couple days with our good friend Jermsey Boy, who's just a masterful builder, and I just wanted to ask him about how he textures, so we went into his world and then he came into my world and we just talked a little bit about things and texturing, and if you like building, make sure you subscribe to there. It's Fixit412 off the record or at Fixit412OTR if you do the uh, YouTube handles thing. It's getting a lot closer. I'm really, really liking these windows and the doors. The one thing I don't like though, I don't like the stairs. I don't like that platform that comes out. So I think I'm gonna take those down and maybe make them closer to the build. Yeah, these are just, they need to go. They're just too far away. It was kind of awkward. So I'm gonna live and learn and go through the pain of removing all these and then putting them back. I guess I could move my beacon, but what the heck, it won't take that long. But while I'm here, I do wanna retouch on something that I already did where I'm making this 
quote unquote historically accurate based on architecture as much as I can for the Mayan thing, but with there's some caveats. One, as I mentioned before, I believe these temples were actually not hollow. They were completely filled up and that's sort of what supported the weight. So I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna make a pretty Minecrafty. Also, I'm not insane. I don't wanna completely fill in the whole thing. That would take the rest of my life. So regardless, I think that's gonna be fine. And also when these were actually made, they were actually red from what I can find on the internet with a little bit of research. They were painted and I'm making them look aged because I want the Kingdom of the Avon to look like it's been here for a while. Steve Tepic isn't necessarily building everything from scratch. He's restoring a former kingdom, right? So some of these things would have existed, like for example, the raid farm and this temple and some other things too. So we're gonna go with the moss gradient and I think it's gonna look really, really good once we get a lot of shrubbery and trees and stuff planted. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that top a little bit. I'm in fact just gonna leave it because the top is plain. I, it had a design in the old Mayan architecture. I don't know if I'm gonna do design. I, I just need to think about that. That I'm gonna think about. The rest of it though, I really, really like. I think we are off to a really, really good start on this entire Kingdom of the Avon. <laughs> a very long dominion meeting and then hang afterwards about just season two and how it's going vibe check all that kind of stuff it's all good stuff i can't wait for you to see what's happening on dominion smp but i had like four hours of grind so i just decided to cut the rest of this mountain down and be done with it so i did and it's done all right cool the thing is, though, I want to terraform this, and I want to make it look really, really good, and I don't really know what to do. I took away all the mud, which leaves me with these giant holes, so I guess I'll just light it up and put grass over top of it. I mean, it's going to be a jungle, right? I want to do some very gentle sort of dirt and grass slopes up from the water up to the level of where the stairs end, where there's going to be other houses and stuff like that. Eventually, I'll probably do some water stuff and effects, but for right now, I'm okay with just covering it with grass and then dealing with this down the road. But... It's time for, yeah, the question or comment of the day. It's been a while, but it's back in the series. While I'm placing grass, the Lacan says, OMG, I saw finale. I was so worried, but I can't wait for the new series and all the future videos. And I don't have TikTok or Facebook, but I'll happily watch as much lore as I can here. So that brings up a great thing for me to talk about because I tried something and you all spoke and I heard you and I wanted to let you know I'm adjusting course. So I really tried to do some Facebook exclusive only lore things. Now, some of that is still gonna be there, but most of it is gonna be found as well on the second channel right here on YouTube. I can't put that stuff on the main channel, obviously. I gotta make sure the main channel performs, but the second channel is where I can put stuff that, like shorts and like just lore videos, maybe interviews, that kind of stuff that might not fit otherwise. So if you're on Facebook, then cool, facebook.com slash fixit412. But if you're not, then you can check out all the lore and all that kind of stuff on the second YouTube channel, which is fixit412 off the record. That'll be linked down below. Make sure you subscribe to see daily lore shorts. I do need to go to the end here and remove all of the man-made stuff I need, except for the Ender Ender. I'm gonna keep that there, but all the like bars and any of the stuff I use for killing the withers, that's all gonna be hidden and gone because all the sets I use for the animation bits, they're all actually in the world and I actually build them all sort of in survival. So like this concrete uh, cobblestone thing, it's, it's gotta go too. You might be saying, but wait, I just watched the whole lore segment and, and I didn't see anything. It just, it just wait, just wait. Don't miss the epilogue. Never miss the epilogue in these episodes or you're going to kick yourself. And after a bit of grind, geez, I forgot how much endstone I've mined here. I am good. If you notice the texture is a little different, yeah, it is. Because this is no longer the end. This is the moon. I returned back to Gabor because I have a little bit more texturing. I forgot to texture the stairs and they look ridiculous if you don't. So I got to texture those. You know, one of the things I really, really want to do is I want to do a custom biome, and I'm a little bit split if I want it to be a jungle or a mangrove swamp. Since I'm taking down all the mud and all the mangrove trees, it really can be anything. I'm just looking at this jungle and kind of seeing how it's sort of pre-gen before I make any decisions. Since I have a ton of mud, and since all the buildings in this area are probably going to be like gray scaled and with some green and stuff, I wanted to go with the brown mud and coarse dirt roads. I think it's going to look 
really, really, really good. I think this is a very simple and nice mixture. If I'm gonna build out of jungle, however, I'm gonna need a lot of jungle saplings, jungle leaves, and jungle wood. I'm just still not really sure. Maybe I'll do like a combination. I'd like to do all custom trees, but that depends. Regardless, I need to farm a whole lot of jungle saplings. I have basically none in this world. For right now, just for this episode, I just planted some vanilla mangrove and some vanilla jungle trees, and I think it's cool. I think I'll probably end up replacing those with custom terrain later, but for right now, I think it's a really cool look in a lead up to the very first temple of the Avon. But with that, I think we're all done with this. This is a great start to a brand new series. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. I am super, super psyched. I think the style is really cool. It's a lot different for me, and it's gonna be awesome when we get a nice, giant, huge, sprawling kingdom that's gonna completely surround this old Mayan raid farm that we have right now. Oh, I am psyched. I hope you watched my video 100 Days on the Moon because the epilogue starts right now.